appreciate um, the section's uh, idea to come here and do this mock interview program. And for the students, if you don't know, there's attorneys here from all around the country for the ABA mid-year meeting. So um, they've come to fortunately beautiful San Diego today and not the windy, thunderstormy, monsoon San Diego. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to let Denise uh, start the program and take it away. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. As Jeff said, my name is Denise Damasio. I'm a Thomas Jefferson alumni. I want to echo Jeff's thoughts, but also specifically thank Jeff and Lisa Fields and Isabel for allowing us to come here today and talk to you about the interview process and do some mock interviews. Uh, we are part of the American Bar Association Tort Trial Insurance Practice Section. Uh, with us today as part of our panel, we have John Carter Falsa, who is the incoming chair of the section, and I'd like to give him the opportunity to tell you a little bit about who we are and what we do, so that uh, hopefully maybe you'll join us for some events over the next four days. Good morning. Uh, this afternoon, we've got a CLE going on over at the uh, Hyatt, which you're all more than welcome to attend. Um, it's on some different topics with respect to corporate counsel practice. So it may not be exactly what it is what you intend to do with your legal career once you get out of here and pass the bar, but it's probably something that you might want to drop in and take advantage of and see. You know, the new ABA rules let you folks join for free, I think. You get to hit five sections. and. Uh, trial and insurance practice section covers a wealth of individual topics beyond just what the title of the section might indicate. We have committees in insurance coverage, government, public relations, aviation, space. We've got, I think we're up to 52 different committees. So um, of your five sections, I would encourage you to please give tort trial and insurance practice a look. Um, my only other comment that I make right now before we start the, the part of this program that we've come for is, you know, this is a really good turnout. I've done this at a lot of law schools, and it's been me and a couple of members of TIPS and two or three students, so I'm very impressed with the turnout here today. And I encourage you to continue to take advantage, whether it's through the ABA or through anybody else of programs like this. You're here to get educated in the law. This is the best way to do it. Take advantage of whatever you can when outside practitioners who are doing a real, who are right there practicing law come in because I feel very strongly that it's part of every lawyer's job to educate those who come behind us, okay? You know, in England, you've got to go and you've got to take dinners and you've got to do a tutelage and all the rest of that stuff. We don't really do that here. We don't do apprenticeships and we don't do internships as attorneys. But I think it's very important for each generation of attorneys to pass something down to the next generation of attorneys. Okay? So enjoy the program. I am horrible. I am dangerous. I make people cry during interviews. Okay? <laughs> but when they leave, most of them usually want to come to work for me. And we'll get into that when we go to the body of the program. So thanks very much for coming. Join the tort trial and insurance practice section when you get to opt into the ABA. And make the most out of today. So thank you very much. Uh, let me just kind of give you guys an idea of the formatting of the program. This is Mike Dumas. He's my co-moderator. Uh, just tell them where you're from and kind of where you are in your career. Uh, sure. So my name is Mike Dumas. I'm a third-year student at the University of Maine School of Law up in Portland, Maine. Uh, I'll be honest, when I left there yesterday, there was snow on the ground. Uh, so if I seem a little overexcited to be here, you can probably imagine why. <laughs> um, like Denise said, I'm the uh, co-chair of the TIPS committee that's uh, putting on this event. I'm also the vice chair of the ABA's Law Student Division, which basically means uh, I serve as a national lobbyist uh, for all of you and students excuse me, around the country uh, on issues like uh, the Uniform Bar Exam, Public Service Loan Forgiveness, uh, and a lot of other things. So uh, as John said, we have a CLE program this afternoon. You're uh, absolutely encouraged to attend. Uh, I would say the TIP CLEs are probably one of my favorite to attend. Um, you've got hundreds of attorneys here in town. Uh, put them to good use. So uh, with that being said, so we're going to have uh, these two gentlemen and these four lawyers introduce themselves briefly. Basically, uh, it's going to be their name, where they're from, how many folks they've interviewed over the last 12 months, uh, and a do or a don't about the interview process. The four attorneys here 
seated in the front. We'll just let you know their name, where they're from, and one do or don't about the interviewing process from the perspective of the person being interviewed. So something they've done right, something they've done wrong. We don't know. After that, we'll break up into groups. Uh, these four folks will assist you with some resume writing tips while these gentlemen do some mock interviews for you. So with that, um, John? So you already know what I do for tips. I am a managing attorney with Zurich Insurance Company. I have three offices. I have about 18 attorneys that work for me in Buffalo, Manhattan, Tarrytown, New York. Um, we have about 11, I have about 1,100 cases under my control with a worst case scenario value of somewhere around anywhere from 500 million to 750 million dollars. Okay, one thing that I would encourage you to do when you go to an interview, you're going in looking for a job as a lawyer, act like a lawyer, dress like a lawyer, speak like a lawyer, behave like a lawyer, okay? I had somebody say to me once with respect to a question I asked them about the Constitution that they thought something that the Founding Fathers left was a Debbie Downer. Nowhere in my review of jurisprudence anywhere in the world have I found Debbie Downer contained in a decision. Okay? Dress well. You know, I've had people come in with their ties undone, their cuffs open, act like a lawyer. You want a lawyer job? Act like a lawyer. Go ahead. Is it afternoon yet? <laughs> good, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Dan Acosta. I'm the managing attorney uh, for Farmers Insurance in New Mexico. Uh, I have uh, two offices there, eight lawyers. Uh, previous jobs, I've uh, supervised attorneys in four states. Did a lot of hiring over the years uh, and uh, had over 100 attorneys reporting to me at, at one time uh, during my career. Uh, so I've been involved in a lot of interviewing and uh, hopefully I will be able to give you a few tips uh, that will help you and like I said earlier if, if, you're, if you're having lunch before your interview make sure you go to the bathroom and see if anything's stuck in your teeth. So, <laughs> tip, tip number one. Uh, just one tip. Just one, one tip. One tip. No, no, that was an off the cuff tip. We did have a panel member just join us over here. We have uh, Gerard. Gerard, why don't you introduce yourself, tell them where you're from and your either do or don't bullet point tip for the interview. Okay, uh, well good morning to everyone. I apologize for walking in late. Number one rule not to do in terms of the interview. <laughs> <laughs> we caught the camera at like 10.30 or 11.30, and he went all the way to, I think, the California School of Law. Um, and worked his way around and yeah. went to another place, and I was like, okay, <laughs> this is the address, so I do apologize. Um, in terms of my background, I've been with Allstate Insurance 17 years. So I started, uh, I got recruited out of law school by the DA's office in Dallas County. Went to Allstate about a year and a half later, and then after that, uh, did about seven years of Allstate, and then from there went to Chicago, where our home office is based. Did that for about six months, and then they shot me down to Houston. So I moved my family to Houston, uh, which was a little struggle, trying to get my wife to agree to go through the move. Uh, did that for about two years, ran that operation, and then moved to Seattle. Did that for another two years. As you can tell, the two-year theme there. And that's one of the things you'll learn, and we'll talk about it a little bit today, in terms of not only going through the interviewing process, but when you go for the interview, figuring out that you are also interviewing us. It's not a one-way street. A lot of times you get nervous because you're thinking that they're interviewing you. You're also interviewing them to verify whether or not that you want to actually go with that particular firm. So I'll continue now in terms of my history. After Seattle for about two and a half years, I then got moved to uh, Chicago, where I ran both the Pacific Northwest region in addition to the Midwest region. Did that for another four years, and now I run the entire East Coast for Allstate Insurance in terms of our staff council operation. I apologize, once that's another don't do. Phone. So make sure you don't have, make sure you always have your phone off during the interview process. But long and short of it, uh, I've been very fortunate to be able to go through different moves, learn different areas of the country, learn different styles. But when I interview someone to the bullet point question, I'm looking to see whether or not it's an individual that can work with my group. I'm not worried about the technical skills as much. We all have technical skills. I can teach you technical skills. The question for me is whether or not you can work with my team and whether or not you can also work with individuals as far as within the community, the legal community. Because if you upset those individuals, they're all gonna be focused on our firm and it impacts our brand. So I wanna make sure that you are the type of person that I can just put it plug and play because I can teach you how to try a case. I can teach you all the different pieces from a technical standpoint. However, the people skills from my experience those are harder to change. Thank you. Sure. 
So we've talked a bit about interview skills, interview do's and don'ts, um, but as you know, one of the hardest things can be actually getting into the interview. Uh, so we have four attorneys here who, uh, as Denise mentioned, will be uh, sort of focused on the resume aspect. So if we can start on the end, go ahead, introduce yourself, where you're from, what you do, and uh, your resume, if you were done, and sure. a little bit about why. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brianna. I am from uh, Minnesota. I also work uh, for Farmers Insurance. Um, as a younger attorney, I guess what a resume tip would be, you maybe don't have a lot of what you consider legal, rel like relevant legal experience. So really spend some time trying to find things that you have done and how that could relate to the work you're going to do, that let them know your go-getter, um, volunteer experience, other work experience, and think about how you can relate that to some, maybe some of the questions you're asked during the interview when you're coming in from a position of not having a lot of legal experience yet. Joel. Hi everyone, I'm Joel Zilstra. I'm also from Minnesota, like Brianna. Um, I'm staff counsel at Farmers Insurance. Um, I've been practicing for about 15 years and I've been at uh, both uh, small firms, uh, fairly, fairly bigger firms, and now staff counsel and staff counsel for Farmers Insurance I think has about 500 attorneys nationwide. Um, as far as resume, I think one of the uh, things that I like to focus on is, is formatting. Um, I think if it's pleasing to the eye um, right away, uh, it, it can make you stand out from someone else. Um, and I think part of that is also looking at whether you formatted that resume so that it can be printed out. Now, we live uh, in law school. We uh, are very tech savvy, but a lot of lawyers are not so tech savvy, and so things get printed out. And the formatting from electronic to going to the paper format uh, may not transfer as well. So that's uh, my tip. Hi, everyone. My name is Hillary Fox, and I also am with the Minneapolis St. Paul Office of Farmer Staff Counsel. I'm the supervising attorney there. I've been practicing law since 2002. My resume tip for you all is proofread, 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 then please have somebody else who loves you proofread again. You would be amazed how many times the wrong to or there gets used, it won't get caught by spell check, and just a teeny little mistake like that can put your resume in the circular file. So please be careful, look it over, attention to detail is key for all attorneys, so that is something a recruiter or a hiring attorney is really going to be looking for. Everyone, my name is Kirsten Soto. I'm a litigation attorney out of Dallas, Texas. I've been practicing for a little over three years now. And my tip would be uh, make sure you know and really review each line of your resume before you go in for an interview and that you're able to relate the skills that you've put on your resume back to what the job is actually looking for. Um, you never know when someone is going to pull out one line from your resume from something you may have done in an internship or a job three, four, five years ago and you don't want to be caught searching for your words and searching for a way that relates to the position that you're applying for. So just really know what you've put on your resume. Take a few minutes even before you go in to review it again and make sure you can think through answering those questions. So everybody, what we're going to do now is we are going to give you a little demonstration of a mock interview, and you guys can decide whether this is a good interview, a bad interview, pick up on some good things done by both, and maybe some not so good things done by both. And while Brianna is coming up to meet with her prospective employer, Dan, um, I'll just add that my interview tip for you guys is to be sincere. Don't use buzzwords and try to show you the person that you're interviewing with how smart you are. I've interviewed probably 50 people over the last six months. My question is, what brings you to my office? Well, I want to do litigation. Well, what does that mean to you? Oh, well, uh, 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 court, I think. So, you know, you have to know who you are going in. Be sincere because if this is someplace you want to work, you're going to have to be yourself eventually. Start at the interview. This is a little awkward interview because we're having to stand. <laughs> and, and read. And read. <laughs> okay. So I'm a shareholder with Dewey LaBeouf and I practice insurance defense. Um, let's see. 
I'd like to start by getting to know you a little better. I had a chance to look over your resume, but I've forgotten to bring a copy. Do you happen to have one? I'm really sorry. I'm staying with an old college friend this weekend, and I, let's just say I was out late last night, and I didn't have a chance this morning to barely get here on time, let alone print out my resume for you, so I'm really sorry. Well, I guess we'll have to do without then. Uh, this is your second year in law school? It is. What did you do last summer? Uh, I worked at a public defender's office. How did you like that experience? I didn't like it at all. It was just day after day of dealing with people who didn't understand what they were involved with. You try and have, help them. Half the time they don't trust you. They don't do anything to help you make your job easier. I don't know. I, most of them deserve to be locked up anyhow, so I didn't really like that job. Hmm. I'm sure you learned a few useful things. I guess. I learned that you can convince a judge or a jury just about anything if you say things the right way. Half the time they don't really care that much anyhow. I see. Um. How are you enjoying your time at Anchorage University? It's been good. I like my professors. I like my classes. My classmates aren't the sharpest, so it wasn't really hard to get to, to the top of my class, which is great. I did notice that you've done quite well in school. Uh, but what would you say is the hardest class that you've ever taken and, and why? Um, well, I really, really liked constitutional law. The professor knew his stuff. I'm a First Amendment nerd. Um, definitely my favorite class. Have you worked on any journals? Oh yeah, I'm the senior editor on the Law Review. So what would you say is the most interesting article that you've uh, edited? Hmm. Ooh, sorry, I'm having a hard time coming up with one that I've done recently. I'm just blanking on that. I've, I've worked on a lot though. Well, you know, that, that happens, you know, especially in interviews. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what you hope to achieve with your career. What do you see yourself here at our firm doing the most? Well, I've always seen myself doing really well at white collar criminal defense work. I've known for years that that is the only type of legal work that I want to do. Well, you're in luck because we have a couple of attorneys here who practice white collar defense. It's good to see that you're enthusiastic about one of our practice areas. Are you sure you wouldn't want to try something different, some kind of different work? Uh, some practice uh, and maybe broaden your horizons a little bit? Mm, honestly, not really. Um, like civil litigation, I think it's pretty boring overall. So. Well, after 33 years, I guess I could see how you feel that way. Um, so tell me a little bit about why you're so passionate about white collar defense. I would assume that you haven't had much exposure to this so far in law school. Oh, yeah, of course, I haven't. But when I was young, I saw that movie, do you remember? Uh, Wall Street, Michael Douglas was in it, he was Gordon Gecko. So I saw that movie and I thought he was a total badass in that movie. I went to law school, I thought it would be really fun and interesting to work with people like him. Plus, I'm sure the guys that defend them make a lot of money. Well, that's very possible and quite interesting. Um, <coughs> forgetting about the law, what else are you passionate about? Uh, you know, we like to do other things here at Dewey LaBeouf uh, when you're, we're not studying. What, what are you doing when you're not studying? Oh, lots of things. I follow the Cato Institute really closely. I write on a lot of blogs. I've made, maintained a website devoted to the evils of big government, um, economic regulation, those types of things. I see. Um, hmm. I see you're wearing a wedding ring. Uh, do you have any spouse and kids? Oh, yeah, I do. I'm married. I've got two kids, a three-year-old son, a six-month-old daughter. Wow, that's wonderful. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, I think I've gotten all the information that I need. Uh, do you have any questions for me? I do, a big one. What's the firm's vacation policy? <laughs> <laughs> well, we give our associates three weeks vacation. I'd like to work for this firm. Um, which you can take at your discretion. Uh, timing and length of the vacation is up to you, but it's something you need to work out with your supervisor once you're on board. OK. What, what would you say your firm is best known for? Well, we have an outstanding reputation for our bankruptcy practice. <laughs> our M&A practice group is consistently recognized as one of the best in the country. And our financial litigation department always has more work than they know what to do with. Cool. Do you have any other questions? Mm, no, I'm good. <coughs> well then, um, it's been a pleasure meeting you, Ms. Uh, Gordon. Uh, you too, Tim. It's Dan. Oh, sorry, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll be in touch.
Does Brianna get this job? No. Does Brianna want this job? No. Should Brianna have even been at this interview? No. Why not? Because she didn't seem like she was even interested. First of all, she came unprepared. She didn't have a resume. She hung out the night before an interview. And I don't think that she was. What about anything that Dan did in the interview process? Yes, sir, she was married. That's what I was going to say. Okay. Yeah, so, the, so they both did things wrong. Uh, Brianna more so, but you know, we forgive her as being the second year law student versus the 33-year-old season litigator. You know, so. He could have said, I see you're wearing a ring. How's that going for you? So, so I think what... No. That's your first or second marriage. And did you meet your next husband at work? I think what we're going to do now is we're going to break up into groups. We've got three folks that are going to be doing the interviews. We've got copies of your resumes. Uh, we've got copies for the folks doing the interviews, and then we've got copies for the folks to give you some resume tips. And you can either uh, go through a mock interview process with them or get some tips on uh, maybe where you think you struggle in an interview process or what's your most uncomfortable moment. And they can assist you with that with some back and forth mock interviewing itself. Hey, Denise, can I add a few comments based on the mock that we just demonstrated so that they can get some sure, they turn around with the camera. <laughs> so what I would tell you is um, the flexibility component when you go through an interview is always important because in most firms you may be in one sec section but we may need to move you to another section. So I need to know that you're flexible enough to be able to deal with change. As you well know, most companies are always changing, firms are always changing, so that's one of the things you want to be able to show. Uh, the other component is making sure that you've done some research on the actual firm. Uh, you want to be able to show that you took that time. That's how you separate yourself. This is all about separation. So knowing about not only the firm, but a particular position that you're interested in allows you to be able to separate yourself. And then she obviously showed passion, maybe not for the right reasons, but what I'm looking for is someone who has passion in the type of role that I'm trying to put them into. And the last piece is, I have about three questions that you plan to ask. And those questions should be more focused on growth and development. That shows me that you're interested in that. Henceforth, as I give you more and more to do, you're willing to just grab it and you're motivated and driven to do it. So hopefully that information will help you as to the amount that you just saw. Also, please just appreciate that, at least when I do interviews, they go anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and a half. So 